Greetings, we're going to look at three math equations. They appear to be simple, but really two are complicated because we work with complex numbers. Let's get started. Here are a few math problems involving complex numbers that may surprise you. We'll start with two which look very similar. Is x to the one-third when cubed equivalent to x? Is x cubed to the one-third simplified to x? Let's find out. Because this problem possibly will involve imaginary units, I'm going to reset the imaginary unit character to small i because I find it more readable. So here's our equation. x to the one-third when cubed is equivalent to x. Maple says yes. Let's look at the next equation. Here's the next equation. Is x cubed to the one-third equivalent to x? No. What if we simplify? This is where we're going to start looking at x in terms of a complex number, a real component plus i times the imaginary component. So I will define x as a plus i times b, where I'm going to make Maple know that a and b are always real. What does our equation look like now when simplified? Hasn't changed. This is where we take advantage of eval C. Now our equation still doesn't look like the left side is equivalent to the right side. Under what conditions might they look the same? Well, what if x is real? That means b is equal to 0. Let's evaluate the equation when b is equal to 0. Hmm, still not equivalent the left side to the right side. What other options could we have? Well, either x is positive or x is negative. Let's start with x is negative. To say x is negative means that a is less than 0. Again, the left side is not equivalent to the right side. What if we say x is greater than 0? In this assumption, we are assuming our, for our equation, a is greater than or equal to 0. This is the only time for which, when our expression, x cubed to the one-third truly does equal x, where a is real and is greater than 0. Here's another problem that appears to be obvious. If x is to, to the 3 halves is equivalent to a, what must be x? Well, x has got to be 2 thirds of a. Is that the only solution? Is that the only value x could be? Let's find out. OK, as expected, this would involve imaginary numbers. So again, I'm going to reset the imaginary unit element to little i. I prefer it. It's much more readable. Here's our equation. x to the 3 halves is equivalent to a. Let's solve it for x. Wait, we have seem to have gotten three solutions. Are all these solutions correct? Well, let's find out. OK, what we're going to do here is we're going to set x equivalent to each of these three solutions that we have here. Then we're going to reevaluate our equation with those answers, and we'll make sure they get simplified. So to read this off, we are going to simplify where we evaluate element-wise the equation such that x is equivalent element-wise to this list of solutions. What's the output? Well, we can see that it doesn't look like two of these solutions make any sense at all. A certainly does equivalent A, so that looks great. But this other equation, that doesn't make any sense, nor this third. In fact, what if we go through and ask the following? Is our test equations, element-wise, one after another, all the same? First is true, the other two are false. So again, it's not a simplification issue. But now let's ask the following question. What if a happens to be equal to minus 1? Are all these solutions, except for the first one, wrong? So again, I will write this out. We are going to evaluate each of these test equations, so we evaluate element-wise, 
for the condition where a is equal to minus 1. And we'll simplify these three equations. When we do, we get the following. The first one makes sense. Minus 1 is equivalent to minus 1. The second one, minus 1 is equal to, I mean, 1 is equal to minus 1. But the third one also works. So it turns out the third solution is a viable solution under this particular situation. Are there other possible options for maybe the second solution works? Let's play the same game. Let's evaluate, element-wise, every test equation. But in this situation, a is equivalent to minus i. And again, we'll simplify. The first answer does make sense. Not only that, but the second equation works. The third equation fails. So it turns out there are three solutions and it just depends upon what is the value of a. Because Maple is programmed to assume that all numbers are complex, unless you tell it otherwise, it will try to return all the possible solutions. Think about that next time you use another package.